but then what you're getting at is cloning the actual knowledge. But I definitely couldn't have worn it in my first job out of college. And effectively throw it away because the cost is going to come down so much to generate. I think that's probably the, the most immediate impact we're gonna see, right? I, I think it will change dramatically. Let me jump on that point really quickly. I also find that it's there's a certain skill set required to manage offshore teams, and a lot of organizations don't have it. They right. treat the offshore teams like it's just another group of employees. Maybe it's employees working the evening shift, right? And they don't consciously figure out how to manage effectively these teams that are, you know, in in its different locations. So right. So I want to throw something out there real quick, and it's always kind of bothered me. And it, you know, there's a reason why it came to my head. Um, I, I I I always, you know, we humans generally look at a service and we say if it's pricier in general we think the quality is therefore better now i think you know look high quality engineering talent i think is the same but historically it's not been viewed that way it's always been viewed as a cost center or an operational expense and cost has always been we got to get less 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 and less and not more more and more and technology was viewed not as a a business enabler or a force multiplier or anything like that for most companies, but merely as an expense to do things faster or do things better or track things better. It wasn't viewed as a uh, a business edge. Some companies clearly view it as such and you know value technology and great engineers. Many don't. The most don't, I think. And I think where I was going with this is you know so hence it made sense I think to offshore a lot to less costly regions. There was that like I said, was that arbitrage. I, I always thought that was kind of a false. Uh, sense of, uh, um, I don't know, a security, what do you want to call it? It was not the right way to go about it. You were not getting, you were getting lower costs, but generally speaking, and again, not at this time, by you were more often not getting less quality for a whole slew of reasons. And I'm sorry, you were going to say? No, no, I, I think, so look, that focus on cost over quality has been an albatross around the IT industry's neck for a long time, right? And and generally, you're right. Um, it's it's almost viewed as the same as like manufacturing costs or other things, right? Which is, hey, you know, if I can get ten thousand lines produced at this cost per line versus that cost per line, why wouldn't I go with the the you know cheaper line of code? Um, and and you're right. There are a few companies that recognize that maybe it's strategically important, but a lot of companies don't. So I, I just want to emphasize that point or agree with that point. It, it's been a misguided notion around technology for a long, long time, I think. Right. I've always been deeply troubled by it because good people are generally expensive. They're much more money, but the level of expertise is significantly higher. And what you'll get out of them is, I think, far more than you will at an offshore team. Uh, and again, I've worked with great offshore teams, too, but it's taken a long time to get them to be great. Uh, and there are good people across the world. Again, not, not trying to diss. I think we're just looking at things naturally and logically based on our experience. Um, I, now, back to the premise of all this. AI, given that it's such a false multiplier and using some of these tools, whether it's Claude Code or Ader or Cursor, and I was using Cursor over the weekend, uh, or any of the other tools that are ra rapidly becoming available for generating code and building applications and managing code and looking at code and surveying code and you know generating metrics around code, whatever it may be, have gotten significantly better. They're great, actually. They're fan fantastic. I, I can do in you know an hour with a a prompt would, would have taken me, you know, a month prior to that and generate some real code. Um, there are benefits that you get with onshoring, closer communications, engineers that are t close to the business, you get a better work product, you get engineers that really understand the business. Now you're giving them the tools to theoretically be a lot faster, create code a lot faster, uh, and just have a level of, um, well, it's not expertise, but efficiency that's significantly higher drop set arbitrage or I think the cost benefit that you might have gotten um, quite dramatically and with an increase in quality and consistency. Thanks for watching Call Me Data. If you enjoyed our podcast, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to us on YouTube and make sure to stay up to date with us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.